So let's say you're trying to decide whether you want to use an abstract class or an interface to model a bunch of different animals in a program. And so first of all, we'll be seeing how we'll do this using an abstract class, and then we'll compare it to making an animal interface and see which one is better for this particular situation. But first of all, what is an abstract class? Well, an abstract class is similar to a regular class, meaning that it can hold both instance variables and methods. So to start, we can define two instance variables, one of them being a string, which will be the name of the animal, and we can make this a private data field. And we can also have another private data field called um, legs, which will be an integer, and that's going to tell us the number of legs that this animal has. The next thing we can do, just like any other class, is create a constructor for this abstract class. But one very important thing to know is that abstract classes do not get instantiated, which means that we can't have something that looks like this. Animal, animal A equals a new animal. That is not allowed because we are defining this as an abstract class. So what you can do instead is make an animal and let's call it D for dog. And let's say we have a class called dog. So you can instantiate a dog as an animal, but you can't instantiate an animal as an animal. And so let's start with this constructor, which will be public. And of course the constructor has the same name as the class. And let's say that this constructor takes in two things, which will be the name and the number of legs that the animal has. We can just set the class's name to the name given and the class's legs whoops, to the number of legs that was given. And we're all done with the constructor. So up to this point, everything's been pretty normal. We've done anything, everything that we could have done in a regular class. But now let's see how the tables turn when we make an abstract method. So there are two abstract methods that I have in mind for this class, speak and move. So for this first method, I was thinking that it would print out what the animal says when it makes a sound. For example, for a dog, you would print out woof, and for a cat, you would print out meow. So let's start by making this abstract method, and let's say it returns a string for what the animal will print out, and the method will be called speak. Since the return value is going to be specific to what animal the subclass is, it would make sense to not define the speak method right now. For example, when we create the dog class, we can implement the speak method and let it return woof. And later on when we make the cat class, we can make it return meow. So the next abstract method that we'll make today is move, which will also return a string and I was thinking that this method would return a string that says how the animal gets around. So for a dog and for a cat, it would be walk. For a bird, it would be fly. Um, for a dolphin, it would be swim, and on and on and on. So this is basically what our abstract class looks like. And let's see how it looks like for an interface. So the thing about interfaces is that they're defined as a collection of methods. And you can think of this collection of methods as a set of rules that any class that implements this interface has to follow. And another thing that's important about interfaces and is a distinguishing factor between interfaces and abstract classes is that interfaces can't hold instance variables. So we can't have the name and legs variables like we had in the animal abstract class. What you can do, however, is say that you have the speak and move methods. So for the speak method, we said that that would return a string of what the animal would say. So the speak method would look like this in an interface, and it would look similar for the move method. Notice here how I didn't put the word abstract in the method header because this is an interface, and so it's kind of expected that the methods that you put in here are not going to be defined initially. Whereas in an abstract class, you can have methods that are both defined and undefined at the beginning. So in our case, the animal abstract class would be much more feasible because it can hold both instance variables 
and methods which can be defined or undefined. Whereas for the animal interface, we can only really define a set of rules, which means that any animal class that in implements this interface has to define the speak and move methods. So in general, abstract classes are more useful for specific cases that require the use of subclasses. But interfaces can be more useful when you're defining a set of rules that can be used over a wide variety of programs. In looking at this right now, you might think that interfaces really don't have that much to them. Am I missing something? Well, it turns out that interfaces can really look this simple. For example, let's take a look at this AP Comp Sci free response question from 2015. And it's saying that we have to write an interface named number group that represents a group of integers. The interface should have a single contains method, and all of the directions are down here below. But if you just saw these two sentences alone, that pretty much gives you the answer, because in the scoring guidelines, they do have sample answers here, and for this question, all you have to do is create the number group interface, and then just write a simple method header. 